Hi everyone. So today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how you can create this chart here. So basically what this chart is currently doing is, is reading the database in Notion. So this is actually my habit tracker, which I have a video that I'll link in below, which I already did a tutorial on it. So basically every day I'll have this list where it automatically generates. And then I have a checklist just to complete the task. So depending on how many I have checked off, it will become uh, updating the percentage. So when it hits 100%, so you can see like all oh, this hundred so which is something that you can see from here like based on my performance like this up and down depending on the months and then lately i've like, been more consistent so which is where you can see at the top here so these are the total number of days that i've started doing this tracking so which is 57 days total days that i've completed so meaning that i achieved 100 percent. so overall is 22 out of 57 and then there's something that's interesting that i'd like to showcase today is the streaks which is how many days I have been consistently completing all my tasks. So in this case, it's 18 days. So meaning that I'm on my 18 days in a row, that I'm being, being consistent. And then just the really extra thing that I added just to change the color. So you can see based on the selections here, you can change the color. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can do it using Greet, which is actually connecting to Notion uh, directly. And then it's actually being updated in real time. So now let's jump to Grid then. So now that we're in Grid, so if you're new to Grid, I have another introduction video on Grid as well. But for now, this is where the Grid interface is. So you, for Grid, it's actually free for all users. Although they do have a paid plan where they can kind of customize the colors of the charts, which I showed you earlier. But then in general, like the same functionality will apply for the free plan as well. So let me just select this habit tracker, which is what I'm showing you earlier. So this is how it looks like inside Grid itself. So you can see like I've written the total days and then all these like numbers here. So all of this is actually referencing something they call, I think, grid sheets. This is actually basically uh, Google Sheets they are using. So inside here, there are a lot of different formulas that I use. Some of them is like query. So if you're not that familiar with um, some of the more advanced uh, formulas in uh, Excel or Google Sheets. So I'm using query to generate these tables. And then some of it is just a more simple like count. Oh, I think I use something as well, just to calculate the streaks, which it's actually showing here. So I'm going to show you how we can actually do all this. And at the, at the core of it, it's actually referencing to this habit uh, database that I have in Notion. You can see we actually have like a direct sync here on just over how you can actually do it. All right, so let's just jump to get started. Then. So first of all, just create a new one. So they ask us like selections to start a grid sheet or so add existing data. So in our case, we use add existing data because we want to connect with Notion. So since I already connect with Notion previously, so you can see like there's a Notion here and I can uh, drop down and I can select the database that I want. So if you're new to this, you can just select Notion here. Let me just show you a little bit. And then this is where you can select pages. So you can find the database that you want to connect to with grid. So for me, since I already selected it, I'll just go back. And then I'll just select uh, the main and then the data, database that one. So in this case, it's habit database. So first of all, let me just rename this as habit tutorial so that I can know. All right. So essentially, Greek kind of functions kind of similar to Notion in terms of like pages. I can actually write words here and then you can insert like graphs so like if you put slash right which is similar to notion like can include charts or different types of data so using this but for today's case we'll be going to create something called a column chart so which is like the most basic chart right for now i'll just leave it empty so just let you know and then what else do we need to create so we have a total um total base so for now we don't have any data yet i'll just fill it out and then is completed and then lastly we have uh, streaks it's uh, by far the hardest thing to generate so let me just do this just pull it up for now we have no data here but like when you can once we're done you can see something like this 40 example yeah, 20. so all this data will be automatically updated so once we are set up properly and then you have the graph here okay so first thing first so you can see here like we have the notion database being connected already 
So this is actually real time. I think you just refresh like every five to ten seconds, like every time you make any changes. So you can see like all oh, this like these are all the data that I have. So for now, I want to understand like what kind of data they are required, right? So let's see. So in order to create a graph, we we'll need data for. We we'll definitely need the progress. So we need to know like how many is it that is actually completed, right? So you can see in the Notion part earlier, we are actually showing like hundred percent. So in this case, it's just showing as one. So one means that I actually completed it hundred percent. So we just want to calculate how many is we have achieved as hundred percent. And then the next one is that we will need. Let me just check what else. So we have the date. So we definitely need the date as well, just so that it's aligned. We know like you create a table that generates it. So we want a table for the date. And then that's it for now. I think there's something missing, but I'll start by showing you how we can actually use query first. So first of all, we want to create generate the tables in this uh, Google Sheets or Grid Sheets. Because by default, like it's very difficult for them to reference this kind of data, it's so many, right? So what you can do is use query. So first of all, just equals query. And then we need to select the whole uh, table that we're gonna manipulate. So I can just do this until the end. Uh, it's not the end. Let me just type it out. A to Z. Okay. So the second thing is comma. So this is a fixed syntax. The first thing you have to do is always select the uh, the, date, the table so next is you need to include a quotation mark so just a double quotation mark and then you type select so if they come from like sql so basically query is very similar to sql i think they use mostly the same thing so select means we want to select the columns that we want to display so in our case we want to display the date so column i and then you have to put comma again and then we then display column r so for now that's the two of it that i can think of now and then I think there's one more, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, there's one more is column C that I want to display. Let me just do this. Right. So you can see now we have column A, column B, column C, which become our date, progress, and block. So this is how like the power of query automatically generates all this for you. So once we're here, there are a few things that you might have noticed. So why is that there's some blank dates here? So you can see like some of those blank. And then another issue that you might have noticed if you're all kind of keen eyes is that the dates is actually not aligned accordingly like so for example 9 13 15 14 11 12. so by right because i'm generating um the dates like on a daily basis right or like weekly but i'll make sure that everything is aligned like from monday to friday monday to friday so it should be aligned so first of all we have to solve two problems first is that we want to make sure that the date is sorted accordingly and the second one is that we want to make sure that whenever there's a blank, we want to remove it. So similarly, we go back to our formula here. So after the C, we type where I. So we want to make sure that I is our clamp, our dates. We want to check like which one is actually empty. So where I, if you type equals to empty in this case, so let me, I think it's like single quotation. If you type it like this, right, where I equals to empty, you can see everything is not going to show, which is just hiding everything. But then if you use where i is not equals to empty, so in this case you can see like the empty space is gone. So yeah, so just to explain a little bit more, so when we include this um, exclamation mark, right? So every time you include exclamation mark, I think in majority of the programming language it means no or not. So when I include uh, exclamation mark equals, it's not equal. And then you have to include this thing like like a single quotation just both of them just to make sure that they know it's blank so you can, i can type something inside as well in this case that like you just show everything because nothing matches this right so that's kind of how it works so the next thing we have to do is make sure that it's ordered accordingly so select the formula again make sure you're at the last place just add a space order by so this is actually a fixed uh syntax that you use order by which one so order by the dates so we select i and then we can use ascending so ascending this asc basically means ascending order so once you select that so let's just make sure we check everything is accordingly so 8 9 10 11 so we actually have two nine that's interesting make sure anything else that's missed out 
Okay, I think so far it's good. So yeah, now that we have created it, so everything is good. You can just pull it, just look, make it look better. So the next thing we have to do is just type out the total days, days completed and streaks. So I can type it out here. Total days, days completed and streaks. All right, so it's for us to calculate total days, so it's quite simple. We just can use count, and then we can select column B. So basically, just counting like whether there's any uh, values inside. If there is, it become uh, yes, so it becomes one. So total we have fifty-seven. So days completed, we can just use sum if. So select column A B again, and then sum if is one, so it's twenty-two. So basically it's 22 here and then the third one we want is streaks so we want to calculate how many days is actually being completed like in a row so in this case like we have one is streaks one and then we actually broke the streaks for quite a while and then until here and then we have the streaks continue until today so we want to calculate these streaks and how can we do that though so basically for how the streak works so i tried to find a few more options on google but then none of that works, so I'm going to just use the most simplest, probably the dumbest way. But it works, so it will do for now. So first of all, just equals if. So you want to make sure that if e2 equals to 1. So it means that if it's 100%. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine d 2 plus 1. If this is not 100% right, it will become 0. So this is how we kind of calculate it. So the idea is that this will always be zero. And then once you move it down, right? And then once you move it down, so you automatically calculate the streaks for you. So for example, now it's the first day. So we have one, means we have one streak, but then we've broken the second day, right? So our streak is zero again. And then we start over one, zero, 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 zero. And then one last thing we have to do is just a minor adjustment. So let me just remove this first. We have to make sure that just uh, the either of these is not empty so if one equals to empty then we don't do anything if not then we just display it as usual okay so you're gonna know why we're gonna do this shortly but let me just drag this down now okay so you can see like we're calculating the streaks now so these are the one that I'm being more consistent on fabric. So you can see like you start from one. So one, two, three, four, five, six until today. So which is 18. And then the reason why I do the formula of just checking empty, because we're going to uh, drag the formula down until 365 days, just to make sure that if it's empty, right? So it won't show anything else. It will kind of break the formula. Okay. So that's how we have it. And next thing we can just continue to I think what I'll do is I'll just copy paste it down. We can do like this. All right. Now that we have the streaks calculated, right? So the next thing is just want to find is we want to find the streaks of how what's the latest one. So this is why we have this thing. This is like a tree here. So basically, this is just. So this is why we have this tree here. So basically this tree is just like I'm using in Notion, it shows like if it's the date is today. So you just show a tree. So we can use this tree to find like when is it actually is today. So first thing we find is we do like a VLOOKUP. And then we want to make sure that our lookup is value is this tree here. And then we find the table. So I think it should be here. Okay, and then make sure if it's a tree, then you want to display the second table. So it should be number one, I think. No, it should be number two. And okay, now this is how we can get our. And that's how we can get our streaks. So you can see we have the streaks already. All right. So now that we have everything, let's get back to our table. 
So for our table here, we want to change the total days, days completed, and uh, streaks. So let's just change it now. So to remove the numbers, what you can do is type equals, and then you select the, and then you select the sheets that we have created. So total days here, just press enter. And that's how you can have the fifty-seven. Similarly for days completed equals, days completed, press. And then lastly for our streaks, equals streaks. So that's how you can have the streaks, uh, days completed, and total days. And then last but not least, our tables, our, our charts here, which is actually the easiest one to be honest. So we just do select all of them, and then you can see like it's being updated. So these are the percentage and then the days. So we just kind of make it look uh, prettier. So for example, some of the things that we can do, I think we can just make a stack, just make sure they're together, and then customize. So if you're using the free version, so you can't change the color by too much. But I think I can do like, for example, can kind of change the color from my end. There are a few colors that you can select if you're free users. And then next thing we can do is, let me go to the axis. So let me see, X axis label. Is this the one? You know, not this one. So X axis title. So I just write base. And then in Y axis options, we can write um, as percentage, I guess. Okay. Then you can kind of change the format of this being displayed. So in this case, it's percentage, right? We just put this percentage so you can see automatically it's being updated. And then we have for at the bottom here, the thing you can just remain. And this one as well, we can kind of change it. So let me just do this percentage labels. Hmm. Uh, it's here data options so we can do label format just make sure it's under percentage as well so when you hover over it you just show in percentage so yeah that's basically how you can create this chart so if you like the videos please like and subscribe and i'll create more contents on grids and show you how you can use it thank you